Levin from Pre-K Pages, and I'm broadcasting live tonight from Dallas, Texas, and our topic tonight is the Common Core. Hey, Louisiana, Florida, Ohio. Hey there. Uh, Michigan. Yay, a fellow Michigander. Excellent. Welcome, everybody. Hey, South Carolina. Even if you're in a state that doesn't have the Common Core, um, this conversation will still be applicable to you because we're going to be talking about how the standards impact early childhood learning and impact us as teachers of young children, whether that's preschool, pre-K, or kindergarten. Hey, welcome, New York, New York. We got a lot of New Yorkers in here. We need to play some Frank Sinatra, get the party started. All right, welcome. Hey, Quebec, excellent, Arkansas. Welcome, everybody. I'm so thrilled that you're here tonight. Um, and I just thought that, you know, this Facebook Live thing is new and your connection cast has been paused. Hello, I'm freezing up. I don't know if everyone can see me or not, um, but we are going to keep trying to connect. I see that you all are commenting, so I'm assuming that you're still here and that you can still hear me. So I'm going to keep talking until it goes away again. There, now it came back. So we're having some connectivity issues, and I'm sorry about that. Um, this is one of the drawbacks of doing a live broadcast. There are sometimes some technical difficulties. So we were a little late starting tonight due to some technical difficulties, and they look like they're continuing to persist. So if I freeze up or go away, um, try refreshing your screen, and if I do freeze up and go away, I'll try to come right back until we reach the end of our discussion. So uh, as I was saying, I'm Vanessa Levin from pre -K Pages. Welcome, everybody. I'm coming at you live from Dallas, Texas, and I really want to talk to you today about uh, the Common Core and standards in early childhood in general and how they're affecting us as early childhood teachers. So you might want to share this broadcast with your friends you think might be interested, um, anybody who might be interested in this topic really. Um, and I wanted to do this broadcast because um, I've been experimenting with, as you know, with Facebook Live, and we've done some little activities and educational type, professional development type things. We talked about how to use plastic eggs uh, in the classroom as an educational activity. And um, we talked with live with Eric Litwin. We had Eric Litwin on the show last week. Um, and we've done a couple of other, uh, we did hands-on learning on Monday. And then I thought, you know, what if we just talked? You know, I don't get to talk to you very often. I usually talk at you by posting things on the page, but I don't get to talk with you. Frisco, well, hello, you're right next door to me. Um, so I thought we would just take this time to talk. So even if you're not in a state that has the Common Core, I think some of this will be very applicable to you and that you can relate to it as well because standards affect us all as early childhood teachers. So let's get started. I don't want to keep you any longer. I know we had a little delay this evening. So let's get started. So first I want to address exactly what the Common Core standards are. And I want to make sure we're all on the same page before we just start talking about it. So it's a national alignment, and we're talking about the United States here. So it's a national alignment of English language arts and math curricula here in the U.S. So a national alignment. So prior to the Common Core, every state kind of had their own thing going on, and so there was no continuity. And so the Common Core came along to kind of level the playing field and bring us all together on the same page. That was kind of the intent. I'm not going to get into all the politics here. But basically the Common Core, it's a K-12 alignment of English language arts and math curricula here in the states and it's the concepts that kids or students are required to know and understand here in the states in the states that have adopted the Common Core. It's not mandatory so there are a few states out there like Texas where I live where they have not adopted the Common Core and that doesn't mean that they are completely rogue and do their own thing. They all have standards. Our standards here in Texas are very very similar to the Common Core. So um, I know there are some of you out there Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Minnesota's adopted some, but not all. We've got South Carolina and Virginia, and, and I think Indiana might be one of the others, but most states have adopted it. So I want to talk about how these standards impact us as early childhood teachers. Okay, 
So we talked about what it is, okay? And in the comments, um, we'll be posting links to the Common Core. So if, if it's new for you, or if you're interested in learning more about it, and I don't have anything to do with them at all, I, I just want everyone to be on the same page. So we do have a link coming in the comments um, to the Common Core website if you want to visit it um, to learn more about exactly what it is. If you're, if you're coming at this from an early childhood perspective and you want to learn more, everything is there on their site. So who created this thing called the Common Core? Well, there's lots of controversy around that too, and I'm not here to, to um, stir the pot. So it was created by the National Governors Association, whoever that is, um, the Council of Chief State School Officers, whoever they are, and they also say they were developed in collaboration with teachers trying to reconnect. There we go. I keep coming in and out. Sorry about that. Um, developed in collaboration with teachers, school administrators, and experts. That's what it says. I'm just reading what they say. So let's get to the nitty gritty stuff. So now we know what it is, what the Common Core is, and who created it. Let's talk about why it was created. And we talked a little bit about how it was kind of to bring everyone onto the same um, page in here in the States. Um, but it's really, it's to provide a consistent and clear understanding of what students are expected to learn so that teachers and parents know what they need to do to help. And coming in the comments um, is a link to the core standards. The, the website, oh look, I printed it off for you. Wasn't that thoughtful of me? <laughs> if you go to the website, Common Core, um, I'm sorry, corestandards.org, um, this is what it looks like. This is my high-tech version. Do you see it there? Ha <laughs> ha. Um, CoreStandards.org, that's the website there. And so there's a lot of helpful information there. If, if the Core Standards are something you're interested in learning more about, um, or if you just want to know more information. So they've got all kinds of links there for parents, links for teachers, um, all kinds of helpful stuff. Those are coming in the comments as well, links to those for you. So if you're a parent, um, there's a link coming to uh, the Common Core information for parents. Um, they have frequently asked questions, all kinds of things there. So corestandards.org. So basically, we're just establishing what it is we're talking about tonight. Now, I don't have anything, I'm not affiliated with the core standards at all. I just want to talk about how they're affecting us as early childhood teachers. So having said that, let's move on. So now we've talked about what exactly the Common Core Standards are, who created them, and why they were created, and where you can find them. Now I want to ask you a question. So here's the interactive part. I want to hear from you. Um, I want to know, first of all, I want to know if this is news for you. I get asked this question every single day. So I'm going to ask you, and I know you all are the experts, so you'll probably already know the answer. But did you know that there are no Common Core standards for pre-K? Okay, I just want to put that out there. I want to shout it from the rooftops and tell everybody, every early childhood teacher in America, there are no common core standards for pre-K, okay? So now we all know that. That's a fact, okay? That's not something I made up. I want to know why. I know why. I want to know if you know why. Um, there's a reason why. There are no common core standards for pre-K. So in the comments, if you can hear me, if you're out there, let me know why you think there are no common core standards for pre-K. Um, there, and there's, you know, this is not a conspiracy theory thing, and it's not a, tr a trick question either. Really, just why do you think there are no common core standards for pre-K? And I'm going to scroll down here and see if I can see any questions. So, the education here in Texas is amazing. I agree, Chess. I think my comments may be frozen. Tom, do you see any? Uh, because not every state has pre-K. Not every state has pre-K. Yes. Megan Pope. Hmm? Says Megan. Says Megan. Megan says because not every state has pre-K. That's true. Anybody else? Um, in my state, uh, yeah, pre-K is not a requirement. It's not a requirement. Okay. So we are, we are aligned here. Yes. You can't require, you can't mandate something that doesn't exist. Okay. There. That is why there are no common core standards for pre-K. You can't mandate something that does not exist. In this country, in the United States, we have no uniform pre-K program that crosses every state. It's spotty. Some states have it, some states don't. Some states have a VPK, some states have UPK, universal pre-K. Um, 
some states have voluntary pre-K, some states have lottery funded pre-K. Um, you know, in Texas, we have it only for uh, children who meet a certain criteria. Um, some places have none. There are states where there is really very little available for children. Then, we, of course, we have the Head Start program um, for at-risk children. So we have Head Start, we've got public pre-K programs that are kind of spotty and poorly funded. Um, we've got some states that have spectacular stuff going on, and then we've got um, all of our private preschools out there as well, uh, and our child care facilities where they offer pre-K. So we have just everything going on. You can't mandate that. You can't mandate that everyone doing those all those different things follows the same thing. Head Start has their own rules. Uh, public pre-K has different rules in every state, so you can't mandate something that doesn't exist. I don't know if public pre-K will exist ever in my lifetime, I'm not sure. I think that would be great, but I can't be certain. It, it certainly does exist in some states. So having said all that, now we know why there is no common core for pre-K. We can't mandate something that doesn't exist, okay? There are states who are aligning their own pre-K guidelines or standards or whatever you want to call those, they, there are some states that are aligning their own to the Common Core. So we have states like New York, Georgia, um, California has transitional kindergarten, which is a whole other animal. Um, in those states, they have their own, in, in Texas we have our own as well, um, pre-K guidelines, and those guidelines or whatever you want to call them standards are being aligned with the Common Core. Um, so. That is um, the reason why we don't have Common Core uh, for pre-K. That doesn't mean we can't align our instruction. So here is, now this is what, these are my opinions, and they're not meant to be controversial. These are just um, things that I've observed in my travels around the country, speaking to teachers and working with teachers all over the United States. Um, the Common Core does not include strategies that should be used to teach the standards. So they just give us the final outcome. Here's the standard. This is it. It doesn't say how to do it, okay? So they're open to interpretation, all right? It doesn't tell us what tools that we should use to teach these standards. So it doesn't say use this to achieve this goal or, you know, to meet this standard. Okay, there's, it doesn't say which tools should be used. Now you may be in a school district or a school where there are mandated tools and that's something your district has chosen to do. And here's the biggest one, and this is my biggest problem with the Common Core. It doesn't include prerequisites. So it gives you the standard, that's the ultimate outcome at the end of the year. For example, one of the kindergarten standards is to recognize um, all upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet. What are the prerequisites for that? If you're a teacher and your ultimate goal is for kids to recognize, um, in, in kindergarten, recognize all upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet, how do you do that? The Common Core doesn't tell you. It's up to you. And quite often it's not even up to you as the teacher. Your district tells you how to do it. And that's when it becomes a problem, okay? The Common Core doesn't include every skill, so it doesn't include those prerequisites. How do you get a kindergartner to learn all upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet? Now, you and I, because we are our teachers and we are experts in early childhood, we know there are many ways. Um, but is there a way, one way that the Common Core says? No. So it's a problem, all right? So are there any pertinent questions coming in? I'm still, my comments are still frozen over here. Like I said, we're having all kinds of technical difficulties tonight and I appreciate y'all um, sticking with us and being patient with us as we work through these little glitches that um, come along with having a live broadcast. Um, just maybe comments um, that they, in New York City does follow Common Core standards. Mm -hmm. um, yes, but there are none for pre-K. So if they have, they have made some for pre-K uh, he, the question was about New York. Uh, does New York follow the Common Core standards? Well, they may, but there are none for pre-K. So we're talking about pre-K right now. So was there anything else? I have a helper here, so we're working uh, through the issues. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. So we're talking about the Common Core. We've talked about what it is, who made it, and why it was created. 
and we've talked about why there are no Common Core standards for pre-K, and we've talked about what it doesn't include. Okay, so the Common Core doesn't include strategies to teach these standards. It doesn't talk about the tools that should be used to teach them, and it doesn't include prerequisites. So basically, you're left out there, you're left with the answers to the test, and no way of getting to the answer, basically, is one of the ways I look at it. Okay, so let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? So this is where it gets sticky. I get asked all the time, is the Common Core bad? Is it bad for kids? That's what I get asked all the time. Um, there's no question that there are problems. There are a lot of problems. And I'll tell you what the two problems are that I see. Um, the two big problems with the Common Core, there's two. Number one problem is implementation. That was the biggest problem with the Common Core. And number two is interpretation. So two huge problems with the Common Core that are creating this huge controversy in our country and this huge media blitz about the Common Core. All of these things that are happening right now in education can be tied back to the problems with implementation and interpretation. And again, these are my only, only my opinions. Um, the implementation issue is that they rolled out this national thing with no training, really. If you were to be trained on the Common Core um, at the early childhood level, let's say if you're a kindergarten teacher, or if you're a pre-K teacher on a campus that serves um, pre-K in other grades, um, there was no training given by anybody unless it was given by your district. So the people that are in charge then are left to interpret the standards in their own way. So every school district, every school, every campus, they were, up, they were left to interpret the standards on their own. And that's when we ran into problems. So um, implementing the standards and the interpretation of the standards are really where the whole thing fell apart. Um, we can't interpret the standards unless we have people there who actually know child development and have been in the classroom and taught and they understand how these things work. So, a huge problem. Um, so what happened with, an, with interpretation was that quite often the people that were supposed to be telling us, the teachers, what to do, their interpretations were way off because they were not, um, or they are not, child development people. And so then we ended up with, with schools that turned into prisons with no recess, no hands-on stuff, too many worksheets, all this stuff because implementation was poor um, and the interpretation was poor. So here's, here's my, do you want to show me any of these? What are the benefits of Common Core? Well, the benefits would be great if they could, if they could roll it out properly. <laughs> if we can, so here, that's a good question. I'm going to address that one right now. Here's the solution to the Common Core. The solution would be if we had continuous teacher training, okay? If we had continuous teacher training given by people who were knowledgeable in child development at the early childhood level. So if you're a preschool or kindergarten teacher and you're being told that you have to meet these standards and you have to bring things up to a level because of the Common Core, um, then you need continuous ongoing training by somebody. And I'm not saying that's me. <laughs> um, you also need to have the Common Core interpret interpreted at each individual grade level. So if you're being trained and you're sitting in a room with pre-K through fifth grade teachers and you're all being trained on the Common Core, that is, that's in my opinion, is a huge waste of time. <laughs> you need to have training specific to your grade level. And then we also need videos. Can you leave that card right up there so I can see it again? Um, we need video training because you can talk all you want about how to teach, but until you actually do it and see it, it's not going to help. So we can talk about the standards until the cows come home, but unless we actually see it in action, what does this standard look like in the classroom? Until we see it, it's not going to help to talk about it, okay? So videos, that is, we need to have videos 
of what the standards look like in action and not just the ultimate outcome, like, you know, kids should identify all up, upper and lowercase letters of the alphabet. We need to have videos of the process, the prerequisites. How did you get to that point where the kids knew all upper and lowercase letters? So we need training, continuous ongoing training, sustained professional development is another word for that. And then we need videos that show the prerequisites leading up to the final outcome, which is the standard. And then each standard needs to be broken down into the prerequisites because giving us the final outcome without listing the prerequisites was really a huge assumption on their part. Um, so it left a huge gaping hole in interpretation. So here are some, um, some questions. Will the Common Core last? Oh, that's a good one. I'm getting to that one. Are the standards developmentally appropriate? It's all about interpretation. So the standards themselves just read as they are written. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the implementation and the interpretation. So anything, I, my true belief is that anything can be developmentally appropriate if you implement it correctly and do it in a developmentally appropriate way. So basically what's happening is some schools are making it not developmentally appropriate because their interpretation is poor and their implementation has been spotty at best. So are they developmentally appropriate? They could be, um, but it's all about that interpretation. Um, will it last? That is a very good question. Here's my prediction. Okay, my predictions are that it's going to be repackaged in some way. It's going to be renamed and it's gonna be rolled out again and hopefully it'll be rolled out correctly because we can't um, we can't go on the way that we are. I mean, it's, it's simply not sustainable right now the way it is. So my prediction is that it will be repackaged, renamed, and rolled out again, um, just because the name has become so controversial. Just the words Common Core can start riots in some states and some places here in the, in, in the U.S., so um, I, I do predict they're going to repackage, rename, and roll it out again, and maybe this time they will do it the right way. Um, so will it last? Does it take away a child's creativity? Again, that's about implementation and interpretation. If somebody is taking away a child's creativity in the classroom, that's because they have interpreted the standards poorly. Um, because every standard, I, I've examined the kindergarten standards extensively, and every standard there could be done in a very creative way. So it's all about um, this push down from the top to do things in this uniform manner and to have um, pre-K students doing things that first graders used to do and doing them in undevelopmentally appropriate or in a developmentally inappropriate ways. So again, does it take away the creativity? Only if the implementation is poor. Um, what about ESL? I think good teaching practices are good teaching practices for all children. We will find, we have Common Core Pre-K in New York, Illinois, and Michigan. Yeah, uh, there is no Common Core for Pre-K. Your states might have their own. Um, what about ESL? Good teaching, like I said, good teaching is good teaching. And all these things can be done, but again, this is something they didn't address as, as, as well as they could have. So I'm going to see if I can get my comments to refresh here so we don't have to rely on my poor husband to keep writing over and over again. And I do appreciate your patience with all of this. Role of technology in the Common Core. All right. Do you, uh, is the question, does, do we rely too heavily on technology or? How do you, how do you integrate? Oh, how do you integrate technology in the Common Core? Oh, that's a whole other episode. Well, thank you for that episode. <laughs> that's, that is a good, good one because that could be a whole episode of um, our show here because technology is another hot button issue. So you take technology and Common Core and you put them together and you've got a recipe for a riot right there. Um, there's a lot of problems with technology implementation, so I'm not going to get into that. Um, there are 
there's over implementation, there's under implementation, there, there's, it's a huge divide in the early childhood community right now when it comes to technology. So that is a good idea for another episode. So maybe um, that would be a good topic for a future broadcast. So thank you whoever wrote that uh, comment for us tonight. So I want to know if you have any other questions about the Common Core that I can help with. And I don't, I don't pretend to know everything. These were, like I said, these were some facts and some opinions that I have about it. I think that um, there are two big problems. Like I said, implementation and um, interpretation. And they've been poor, those two things have been poorly done. Um, and a lot of things have been left up to us to interpret, you know, the teachers to interpret. And it's, it's, and everyone's interpreting it differently. So instead of having a level playing field where we bring everyone together, we, they really not achieved that goal at all, in my opinion. So we need the continuous training. We need to interpret this, the standards at individual grade levels. So if you're going to include pre-K teachers in your Common Core training, then you need to have training specific to that grade level because otherwise you're letting them interpret what you're saying and that's how we get a lot of the first grade stuff down in the pre-K levels. Oh yes, if you're just joining us tonight, and you've missed the first portion, that's okay, because this broadcast will be available for you to watch again right here on the Pre-K Pages Facebook page as soon as I'm done tonight. So it will live up here on the page. I usually pin them to the top, um, pin these broadcasts to the top until the next one. So this, this one about the Common Core will be there available um, to watch at any time, but for the next few days, it will be available at the very top. So whenever you visit the page, it will be the first thing you see. If you're on desktop, mobile is completely different. <laughs> Um, the best way to prep pre-K kids for the Common Core is to do what you know has always been best for children. There, that's the other thing. We don't need to change anything. Kids still need what they've always needed. They need rich oral language development. They need print-rich environment. They need singing. They need rhymes. They need um, hands-on. They need centers and recess and because they have to be well developed in order to succeed um, with the Common Core standards. So for example, if we have, a, there's a kindergarten Common Core standard that talks about writing okay and they really expect a lot out of writing at kindergarten level so how do we prepare pre-k kids for the common core in kindergarten well they can't write paragraphs until they can use their hands and hold pencils so what do we do we're going to help develop those prerequisites so we need fine motor skills we need fine motor skills, we need gross motor skills, kids need to be crossing the midline and they need to be doing all those things that they've been doing for years and years. Um, and the role of play is very, very important in pre-K. I don't know if you know this, but play, pretend play, child initiated play where kids talk to each other without a structured environment, that kind of play is directly tied to reading achievement in later grades. And the reason that it's tied to reading achievement is because it develops all those skills that those prerequisites that kids need to be good readers. Um, and one of those things is oral language. There's a direct correlation between a child's oral language abilities and their reading abilities later because their vocabulary increases. And we all know about the Hart and Risley study um, that's, that talks about the language gap and the number of words that kids uh, for low income homes versus um, higher income homes uh, have. So the role of play is extremely important in preparing kids um, for the Common Core. So play should be even more important. Kids need to have the strong oral language, they need to have the creativity, they need to have imaginative role playing, they need that oral language everything and you can you can um, certainly provide lots of opportunities for writing and math and literacy in your dramatic play center I have a, a whole dramatic play um, series at pre-k pages so if you go to pre-k pages dramatic play is right there at the top and you click on that and you can see all my information about dramatic play there so the role of play is huge especially in this common court era super important um, 
I'm not sure what this one means. Training of teachers for... The importance of training teachers at the specific grade level. The importance of training teachers at the... What is the importance of training teachers at the specific grade level? That importance is that teachers need uh, the, the child development rationale. We need to know why we are teaching, what we are teaching, and how it relates back to that child's development as a whole child. So if we're getting, you know, training that's pre-K through fifth grade about the Common Core, I don't know how that benefits the pre-K teacher or the fifth grade teacher. You know, you've got this, um, it's too wide. We need to be breaking down those standards into their prerequisites. And in order to do that, in order to really do that effectively, you need to do that at a grade level. Um, at a specific grade level. Um, that doesn't mean you can't ever have a training for pre-K through fifth, but I wouldn't want to go to it, would you? <laughs> what is a big no-no? In doing this type of training. Oh, what is a big no-no in doing this type of training? In, in, type, in doing training for... Common Core, what would you not do? What would you not do? Oh, there's lots of things I wouldn't do. <laughs> Goodness, that's a tough question. I'm not sure. Maybe that's an email question. I don't know if I want to do, do that one live. Um, but you can always email me at v11 at prekpages.com. That's pre-kpages.com. Um, and there's also a contact button there on the website at all times. So, <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for the compliments. Maybe our next broadcast won't uh, be so glitchy. Um, I will say that I was trying to f look through the Facebook help feature, you know, because they're supposed to be there to help you or whatever when you have problems. And it said, broadcasts must be no longer than 30 minutes. And I laughed out loud because I've watched broadcasts that have lasted two hours. And I broadcasted for 47 minutes before. So obviously the help feature is outdated. Oh, um, if you would like to be notified of our broadcasts here at Pre-K Pages, we go live every Monday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, if there's no technical glitches. Um, if you'd like to be notified about um, not only these broadcasts, but new things, uh, new blog posts and things at Pre-K Pages, um, there should be a subscribe feature here um, on the Facebook page in the comments. There'll be a subscribe uh, link there you could subscribe and then you'll be notified and I always put my Facebook broadcasts in my notifications for you as well as new information at Pre-K Pages. So I'm Vanessa Levin from PreKPages.com coming at you live from Dallas, Texas tonight. I really appreciate everyone who showed up. I want you, if you think this information would be helpful to your colleagues or your friends or anybody, please feel free to share it with them. Um, like the post, tag them in the comments, um, ask questions as we go. Um, many, many more questions. There are many more? Okay, go ahead and read them to me. Just read them out loud. Don't uh -huh. write them all down. Go Poor man. About, how do you feel about sight words, about evaluating kids on sight words? Evaluating kids on sight words in kindergarten or pre-K? Pre-K. Pre um, well, I have to say that I have worked for a district that did that. I don't think it's um, a best practice um, at all. It's not necessary. Um, it's just a rote memorization skill. There's so many more things we could be developing to help kids be successful in kindergarten, so I wouldn't spend too much time on sight words if your district is mandating it. You know, sometimes you have to do what you're told, but it's not something I would spend my t my time on in pre-K. What else? <laughs> he told me there was many more questions and then he gave me one. <laughs> okay. He, he's new to Facebook, so you have to forgive him, right? I'm just glad he's helping me out. Let me see if I can refresh my comments. No, I'm still seeing all the stuff from the beginning. All right, guys. Well, I want to thank you for stopping by. You can still post questions here in the comments after the broadcast is over. I do come back and check them. Uh, I do my best to do that. I do come back to answer your questions. And um, if you want to leave any relevant links, you can do that. I know there were a couple of people talking about um, Pre-K Common Core in New York, Illinois, and Michigan. If you want to leave me links to that because... 
I am not aware of that because on the Common Core site, it specifically tells you what states have the Common Core. Um, and it, they do specifically say it's for K-12 only. So if there is Common Core in those states, it's not something I've heard of. They may have rolled out their own pre-K guidelines for their state, but they're not national by any means. So if you want to drop links to those, I'd love to read them and, and, and learn more about that. Um, down here in Texas, um, we don't have that. We have our own pre-K guidelines here. And that's another thing. If you're coming at us from private uh, preschool and you want to know what states are doing for pre-k you can look up their guidelines we have texas pre-k guidelines they're i think they're they're pretty good i i really like them and um they're very much aligned with the common core although we don't do it here in texas um, you can look at the georgia standards they have their own alignment there um, you can look at other states that have theirs online. I think the um, California Transitional Kindergarten ones, I think those are online. So you can find those online and look at what other states are doing in their pre-K programs to help you. And of course, Pre-K Pages is always a resource for you as well. Any last questions before we go? All right, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you have a great night. I'll see you Monday at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. Vanessa Levin from Pre-K Pages. Take care.